What is diffusion and osmosis? Daily life examples of diffusion and osmosis. And I will clear all the misconceptions regarding diffusion and osmosis. Firstly, let me teach you that what is diffusion. Well, consider region X and region Y. In region X, there are 10 molecules of oxygen gas are present. While in region Y, there are 2 molecules of oxygen gas are present. We say that region X has high concentration of oxygen gas because it has 10 molecules of oxygen gas. Comparatively, we say that region Y has lower concentration of oxygen gas because it has 2 molecules of oxygen gas. As a natural process, molecules of oxygen gas moves from region X to region Y. Let me repeat it. Molecules of oxygen gas move from region X to region Y. Let me ask you, how many molecules should move from region X to region Y? Well, the answer is simple. Only 4 molecules will move from region X to region Y. Here, 6 molecules of oxygen gas are present in region X and 6 molecules of oxygen gas are also present in region Y. So the net movement of molecules will stop. Therefore, we define diffusion as when molecules move from high concentration region to lower concentration region, this process is called diffusion. Let me repeat it. When molecules move from high concentration region to lower concentration region, this process is called diffusion. Now in both the regions, there are same numbers of oxygen molecules are present. So they also have the same concentration. We say that same concentration between two regions means no diffusion. Let me repeat it. Same concentration between two regions means no diffusion. Also remember that diffusion only occurs in gases and liquids. No diffusion process occurs in solids. If you ask me why molecules move from region X to region Y, then the answer is simple. We say that Diffusion is a natural process in which molecules move from higher concentration region to lower concentration region. Thus noted down all these important points. Now let me teach you two bonus questions. Does diffusion require any energy to take place? The answer is no. It doesn't need any external energy. It is a natural process and it is also a slow process. So no external energy is needed for diffusion. Secondly, is the moment of wind is diffusion? The answer is no. It is not a diffusion. We know that moving air is caused by the differences in air pressure. So the moment of wind is caused by differences in air pressure. It is not a diffusion process. Remember that Diffusion purely depends on concentration differences between two regions. Now let me teach you some examples of diffusion in our daily life. The first example of diffusion is the smell of perfumes. We know that the smell of perfumes spreads due to the diffusion. Secondly, the up movement of helium balloons. It is because the helium is gradually diffusing from a helium rich region to the helium poor region. Thirdly, when we open the soda cold ranks, we can see that the carbon dioxide gas diffuses in the air. Fourthly, when we add sugar in a cup of hot tea, it slowly dissolves in the tea. It is also an example of diffusion. Lastly, let me clear one misconception about diffusion. A lot of people think that Breathing like inhalation and exhalation is a diffusion. But it is totally wrong. It is not a diffusion process. The inhalation and exhalation process is caused by pressure difference, not by the diffusion. Now coming to the second part of this lecture. What is osmosis? Well, personally, I say that osmosis is the special type of diffusion which only occur in water. Or we can say that 
Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules. Now to learn osmosis, we must learn that what is semi-permeable membrane? Well, semi-permeable membrane only allows water molecules to pass through. It doesn't allow big molecules like sugar molecules or salt. Secondly, you should also understand dilute solution and concentrated solution. In dilute solution, there are more water molecules present, while in concentrated solution, comparatively, there are less water molecules are present. Now consider case number 1. Let this is the semi-permeable membrane which divide this system into two parts. Let in this part of the system, there are 9 molecules of water are present, while in this part, there are also 9 molecules of water are present. If I ask you, what about the net movement of water? The answer is simple. They both have the same molecules of water, so they have the same concentration. Thus, the net movement of water will be zero. I mean, water will not move from one part to the another part. Now, let consider case number two. Let in this part of the system, there is concentrated salt solution, while in this part of the system, there is dilute salt solution. These two parts of the systems are divided by the semi-permeable membrane. Let in concentrated salt solution, there are four water molecules present, while in dilute salt solution, there are 12 molecules of water are present. Here, we are only interested in the movement of water molecules. Let me repeat it. We are only interested in the movement of water molecules. Let me ask you, can you guess the movement of water molecule? Well, in the dilute solution, greater number of water molecules means greater concentration of water molecules. While here in concentrated solution, smaller number of water molecules means smaller concentration of water molecules. We know that Water molecules move from higher concentration region to lower concentration region. So, water molecules will move from dilute solution towards concentrated solution. Now, how many molecules will move from dilute solution towards concentrated solution? Well, only 4 molecules of water will move from dilute solution towards concentrated solution. Now, in concentrated solution, there are 8 molecules of water are present, while in dilute solution, there are also 8 molecules of water are present. So, no more net movement of water molecules will take place, because both the solutions have the same number of water molecules and osmosis would stop. Therefore, we define osmosis as the movement of water molecules from a solution with a high concentration of water molecules to a solution with a lower concentration of water molecules. Let me repeat it. The movement of water molecules from a solution with a high concentration of water molecules to a solution with a lower concentration of water molecules. Thus note it down all these important points. Now let me teach you some daily life examples of osmosis. The first example of osmosis is fish absorb water through skin and gills. The second example of osmosis is plants. Plants absorb water from the soil through root hairs. The third example of osmosis is potato placed in water. Potato absorbs water through osmosis. The fourth example of osmosis is digested food absorbed in small and large intestine. So, we also absorb digested food through osmosis. Thus, these are the different examples of osmosis.